How do we perform time series analysis in Radiant? How do we construct a time series model and how do we use it to perform both in sample and out of sample forecasts? These are the questions motivating this video and we're going to do so using this data set. And what we have are sales, uh, specifically beer sales, over uh, monthly periods beginning with uh, January 1995 up until June 2007. And so what we're going to do is we're going to estimate uh, a model that hopefully allows us to capture both uh, general time trend as well as seasonal factors that could be cyclical variations over the different months, people buying more beer in, in the summer or the warmer months and less so in the colder months, for instance, we'll see what actually happens when we analyze the data. So uh, we will load this in Radiant. So we're going to go into Radiant, yeah, starting with the uh, standard interface, and we're going to load a CSV file. And after we've loaded the CSV file, we'll check that everything worked out here. And it seems to have worked well. And we're going to have to do a couple of things before we get going. Uh, first of all, let's check it how our data is currently formatted. So we've got sales, we've got the different dates, and we've got uh, a variable that contains uh, the different months that we could use for uh, seasonal effects and um, as it turns out sales is currently specified as an integer that's fine date is character so it's text um, and month equally is currently uh, defined as a text variable we want to do a couple of things. First, what we may want to do is we would transform, we can start with month, this variable into a factor so that we can use it um, in the analysis. So we can go and change type as factor. What that does for us is that we can use this variable month as a dummy variable uh, to capture the effect of the different months of the year. So we'll say as factor and store. Another thing that we want to do is we want to check, as it already showed us here, if these factor levels are appropriate for us. And as usual, it just simply takes the alphabetical order. So the months are not in chronological order as we would expect it. So if we create dummies, it's going to take April as the reference uh, category, and we may not want to do that. We may want to take January as the reference category. So whenever we want to reorder different levels of a factor, we can do this right here in transformation type, remove or reorder levels. And it's showing us all of the different levels, so we could remove them. But what we want to do rather is simply reorder them. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. So we've got it in chronological order as we would expect and, and want it to have. So we just store this. So it store this change in our month factor variable. Something else that we may want to do is when we have date variables, we can click on the date. Right now it's simply a text variable. We may want to tell Radiant that this is an actual date, so treat it as a date. And we can do this by changing the type from a character text variable, string variable, to a date. So the function as date We'll turn that into a date variable. We just have to make sure that the formatting is appropriate. So currently it is month, day, year. So this is what this stands for, MDY, month, day, year. So we'll select that. And it's already showing us here the preview of what happens, and that seems to be 
uh, exactly what we want, so we will save this change in our data set. Something else we may want to do is to include a time trend variable instead of using the date variable um, to capture a, a general trend uh, over time. And we can simply create one by going to transformation type create variable. And we may do this by saying time and we have 150 months here, so we'll just say, please give us one, give us a variable with values between 1 and 150. And we can use this to capture uh, the general trend over time of sales. So time 1 to 150, and this is the notation that uh, works in R to create the series for us. Uh, should create this variable as it does uh, between 1 and 150. And we can store this to our data set and now we've got a sales variable, we've got a month variable for uh, the seasonal effects and we've got a time variable which we'll use to generally capture uh, the trend of uh, time overall. And at that point we can go in to our uh, linear regression uh, model up here and we can say please predict sales as a function of time and uh, month and we can ask for confidence intervals as usual and everything else we'll leave it as is for now. So we press estimate and what we get is a prediction of sales based on a general trend of time and these different seasonal uh, factors, which are dummy variables, uh, as we have used before. And the reference category is January, because we have ordered that factor month in the way that January comes first, as we just did. And so February is associated with greater sales compared to January, specifically 4,469. And then as we can see, which is something that we intuitively predicted, um, for instance, the warmer months, so at an extreme July compared to January, is associated with additional sales of 20,000. So significantly, more beer consumption over the warmer months of the year, which is something that we may have predicted. Maybe the little uptake or increase here in, in December is the holiday mood, who knows. And it also seems that over time, in general, so from 1995, I believe, when we started out to 2007, uh, beer consumption increased on average. Um, specifically, with an additional month of time, beer consumption on average increased by 144. Sales, that is. Now, um, what we want to do is we can predict now, we can create a prediction for beer sales for the same data. So we can start out by basically predicting uh, sales based on the model we just constructed and see how well we uh, fit it to the actual data. So prediction input, we're going to use data, same data, beer sales, and we get this preview here, 10 out of 150, with the different predictions including prediction intervals uh, for, for different uh, dates in our data set. And we can store these predictions as well as plot these predictions. And so what we see here actually are, uh, if we don't change anything, these are the seasonal factors. So more consumption over the warmer months and less so over the colder months. Uh, but what we might want to look at is time overall. So this is our 
prediction in general, um, and we see that we include these seasonal factors, but we have a generally increasing trend over time. So uh, beer consumption or beer sales increased over our period of time. Now we can go and actually compare this to the actual values of sales. So we can go back to data and visualize in a line plot, for instance, our sales as well as our predicted sales. And we're going to combine this in one plot over time. And so we see here that we more or less follow the actual beer sales fairly well. If we want to, by the way, change this plot, so let's say we want to make it a little wider, we can go down here and change the plot width. So, uh, for instance, just by using this adjuster, this makes it a little easier for us to interpret. We can just go to, let's say, 1300 and increase this a little bit as well. And so this allows us to see how well our predicted values fit or compare to the actual values. Now, what we've just done is we have predicted uh, beer sales using our estimated model for the same data. Um, what we may, however, want to do in certain situations is actually estimate or forecast beer sales for new data and see how well we do in that case. And we can simulate this uh, here by splitting our data and we'll use a training sample to train our time series uh, model and then we'll use a holdout sample to test that. So let's do that in the following way. So we've got a data set, we've got 150 observations, which are 150 months between January 1995 and June 2007. And what we are going to do is we're going to go into transform, transformation type holdout sample, and we're going to split our data. The way we are going to split our data is by using the filter option up here in the sense that we're going to say please filter the data according to date. So date needs to be uh, smaller than, um, let's say we'll do this for, we'll, we'll hold out the last year and estimate our model based on, on the first couple of months, the, the majority of cases, and then forecast for the last year. So 2006, um, June is going to be our last month. And this should give us 12 remaining months. Uh, let's see if this filter worked. So actually, um, that's one month too, too many, so up until July. So now what this did is it filtered our data in the sense that um, all of the data that is below 2006 July, which is the vast majority of the data except for the last year, is going to be used as um, the training set. We're going to estimate our time series model based on that because uh, you need to watch out down here the reverse filter is the standard option which means that basically we're going to take as holdout sample all of the data that is above 2006 July and that's exactly what we want we want the last 12 months as is previewed for us here uh, to be used as our holdout sample so July 2006 until 
uh, sorry, until June 2007. And we're going to save this holdout sample as beer sales holdout. So we're going to basically create a, a separate data set with the last year of beer sales. Now at that point, all we need to do is we need to go back into our original beer sales data set and now notice how um, if we use the filter, it's only going to use observations below um, or before July 2006, meaning up until June 2006. And we're going to re-estimate our model with a little less data than before. So starting here, uh, basically leaving everything else else, but just re-estimating it. And we should now not have 150 observations at the base for estimating this model, but correctly, as it says here, 138. So that's 150 minus the last 12 months. And um, we get pretty similar results, but you notice it's not exactly the same as before because we have less data to estimate our model with. We're missing the last 12 months. Now that we have this model estimated, we can use this model to predict for the new data, for the holdout sample that we just created. So we'll click on predict, and instead of using uh, data, our entire data set as before, to create predictions for beer sales, we're only going to predict for the, for the holdout sample that we just created. So we're going to select beer sales holdout, and uh, let me deselect the plot predictions for now. What we're going to get, as we see here, are the predictions including prediction intervals for the last 12 months. And we can look at those predictions again by selecting plot predictions and then either month or time, which in this case, uh, in terms of time, shows us our overall prediction. So uh, the general, including the time trend, which is for the very uh, last year, uh, which brings our prediction to a relatively high level of beer sales, still capturing this um, seasonal uh, effect of the different uh, months of the year. And uh, this is our prediction of beer sales, including a prediction interval, which is the gray shaded area. And uh, we can save those predictions once more, and we can compare them to the actual uh, true beer sales that we have, that we know for these new, to, new observations as well in this case, to see how, how well or how close we got. And in order to do this, we go back into the data tab, visualize, and for the beer sales holdout data, I deselect this filter for now, what we get we select sales as well as predicted sales. This was already pre-selected for us in this case on the Y and then time on the X. And what we get uh, in, in this blue or turquoise color are our predicted sales and in red we see the actual sales. And we see that we did a pretty good job in following um, the actual sales. Now there's a number of ways to compare models um, using indicators that we haven't worked with this far, a couple different statistics that allows us to say how well did we capture uh, the trend and how well do we fit to the data. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video when we compare different time series models and spice things up a little bit further. So that's our simple time series analysis in Radiant for now, uh, estimating a general trend of time, including seasonal factors, and making predictions for the same data as well as new data, and visualizing the results.